you are sunk. If your riches, if your, if your value is going to be according to some money, and you punch in the calculator to know how much you are worth, you're finished. And that's why I'm depositing within your spirit the true value. Your true value is the word that is in you. You got to know it. Because if you have it in you, no matter what happens, you will stay afloat. No matter what happens. It cannot affect your success. No matter what happens. It's like the ark of Noah. As the rain fell and the waters increased, the ark moved higher and higher. But others were drowned in the water. The same water. The same water that drowned them buoyed him. So the circumstances that are sinking businesses today and sinking different people today, the same circumstances will promote you. Glory to God. I want to make sure that by the Spirit of God, I deposit in your spirits that which you need for this latter days to be a victor at every count. So that when people see you, so what kind of, what manner of man are you? <laughs> Hallelujah! What manner of man are you? Yeah, we are the kind that walk on water. No matter the situation, we stay above. Amen. Amen. Now let's take a look at something again. Glory to Jesus. St. John chapter 12 and verse number 49. We can't just speak whatever comes to our mind. No, we've got to train ourselves to have God's word in us. Read for me what you got on the screen. Want to go. These are the words of Jesus. Good. Now, I have not spoken of myself, that, that of myself doesn't, doesn't mean about myself. It means from me. The, the message is not from me. That's what it's saying there. Okay? I have not spoken by my own power, by my own authority. That's what it's saying. But the Father who sent me, he gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. Do you see what's the difference between the two? Important. He is talking about what you declare. And what your speech should be. Uh, Synonymously, this is what uh, Paul was alluding to when he said, "My, uh, my speech and my preaching. See, my speech and my preaching. So, Jesus here is talking about what he declares and then what his message is. So, he says, the Father gave me what I should say. And what I should speak. So when I go out to preach, he says, I'm speaking the Father's words. And when I make declarations and I'm talking to others, he says, I'm speaking from the Father's words. The Father gave me a commandment. So Jesus is saying, I don't just speak. I've received words from the Father. What is your life like? Do you say just whatever comes to your mind? Or are you training yourself to have the Father's words? Some people say, well, I'm known like that. People know me. That's how I talk. That's how you talk? You mean you have not been trained up till now? That's how you talk? You are 56 years old. You are still talking like that? They know you in your area. That's how you talk. Foolishly? I will never talk foolishly. It's impossible. No, I have an excellent spirit. I have an excellent spirit. 
Foolish words don't come out of me. No, I got the wisdom of God in me. Come on, say that with me. Yeah, because I, I like to bring that to your consciousness. So you realize that you are of, a, of an excellent spirit. You're not an ordinary person. When you were born again, you were born of the Spirit of God. You were born of the Word of God. You changed completely. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it, it makes no difference. You are now a child of God in reality. You're born of God's Word. You are a child of the Word. Now, look at St. John chapter 1. Read verse 14 for us. Verse 14. One, two, go. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is he talking about? Jesus. The better rendering, the Word became flesh. The word of God. So Jesus is the living word. Right? Okay, go to First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. Read for me. One, two, go. Jesus is the living word. Right? He is the word made flesh. From this, who are you? I am the word. You are the seed of the word. Right? You are the offspring of the word. So that's the word of God in flesh. So you can understand why the Father wants us to receive His Word. He gives us His Word that we might be His Word and live His Word. So we become the expression of His Word. So real Christianity is the expression of the Word of God in human flesh. That's Christianity. It's not a religion. You know, some people say, the Christian religion is this, and then they're talking about the Christian religion. Everyone who calls Christianity a religion doesn't know what Christianity is. He doesn't know what it is. He thinks it's a religion. Because when he was a kid, they told him to fill his form. Are you a Christian, Muslim, or pagan? He wrote, uh, Christian. So he's been trained in his mind by religious and non-religious but ignorant people to call Christianity a religion. They think it's one of the religions of the world. But Christianity is not a religion. Once you understand it, it transcends religion. It's not a religion at all. There is a religion in Christianity. And what the Bible says about it is, the religion in Christianity is visiting the fatherless and the widows and helping them in their afflictions. He says that is a good religion. And that Christians should do that. They should visit the fatherless and the widows and help them in their needs. Can you see that? But in Christianity, prayer is not a religion. It's not an act of religion. Prayer is not a religion in Christianity. But some people have a religion in their prayer. It is a part of their religion and their religiosity. So they go on and you know, they just carry out their acts of prayer and all these kind of things they do, which are religious. Like some of you might be in church as part of your religious obligation to come to church as a religion. So you are practicing right now your normal weekly religious activity of going to church. But in Christianity it's not so. We don't come to church as an act of our religiosity. We come to church as a fulfillment of the requirement of our fellowship with one another in the presence of the Lord to be taught the word and to participate together in the ministry of the Spirit for the gospel in Christ Jesus. So there's a great difference between the two.
The only, you see, in Christianity, the Spirit leads us. The Spirit of God guides us. The Spirit of God dwells among us. This was the difference between Israel and all the nations that had some form of religion. And they worshipped different gods. They carried their gods wherever they were going. What did God say to the children of Israel? He said, build me a tent, a tabernacle, that I may dwell among you. And then when they built the tabernacle, suddenly the cloud of God's presence came into the tabernacle and overshadowed it. And they were amazed. God called them to assemble at the mountain, on Mount Sinai. And the Bible says the presence of God came over the mountain and God spoke from the fire. And there were thunderings and lightnings and the children of Israel heard the audible voice of God from the fire. They were so scared. In which religion did they hear the voice? It doesn't exist in religion. Then he said, my purpose is not to be in your tabernacle. My purpose is not to be moving among you. He says, my purpose is to dwell in every one of you. And that's why he sent Jesus Christ, son of the living God. That he might dwell in us by the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, it says the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, came from heaven. And from that day, entered into his disciples. And from then till now, all those who believe him receive the Holy Spirit, creator of the whole world, God Almighty, to live inside each one of us, animating us in God. Making us pray as God will have us pray. In real communication of fellowship with the Father. An amazing reality. Our life, our daily walk has ceased to be a religious thing. But a fellowship with this ever-present God of glory. Who lives in us. Such that when we open our mouths, he speaks through us. He said, I will walk in them, and I will talk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. That's Christianity. Well, when people don't understand it, because they don't know the Bible, they never read it for themselves. They carry the Bible, but they don't read it. Read it for yourself, you'll be amazed. I'll show you something. We're talking about the integrity of the word. And there's something that Jesus said that's so important, very, very beautiful, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 15. Why you got to have the word of God in you, in abundance? St. John, chapter 15, verse number 7. Jesus said these words. If he abide in me, oh, glory to God, and my words abide in you, if he abide in me. Oh. Somebody said, I used to be a Christian. Uh, when I faced difficulties, I changed. You changed from what? You didn't abide. You should abide. He said, if he abide in me and my words abide in you. If you don't know his words, how can they abide in you? You've got to hear them. You've got to learn them. You've got to study them. You've got to keep them in you. If he abide in me and my words abide in you, he shall ask what you will. This is not prayer. He shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Let me explain this scripture to you. This is not talking about prayer. Here, the word is, you shall call what you want. I explain it to you. The Greek is ICHO. You shall call. You shall require. It's translated ask here as in some other places. But it means to call up. Then it shall be done. The word be done is the Greek ginoma. It means it shall come into being. Come into being. Doesn't mean I'll do it for you. It means you're coming to being. It says if my words abide in you, you shall call whatever you think about. What you require. 
call it. He says it will come into being. It will come into being. If my words abide in you. It, it makes spiritual sense. I can understand that. Because if it is true that his, his words abide in me. Why should I now be asking and begging? It doesn't make sense to beg. Because God's word is the creator of all things. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything that was made that was made. Now listen. If that is true. That all things were made by the word. If the word is abundant in me. Why am I begging? Why begging God? Why not release the word? So that's what Jesus said. If he abide in me and my words abide in you, you will call out what you desire. You will call out what you require. He says, and it will come to pass. It will come into being. Another synonym is, it will be created. That's what the word dinomai means. It will leap into being. It will come into being. It will come into reality. It will come into manifestation. So you find that if you don't know the word, things will be difficult for nothing and you'll be begging God. Oh God, please do something for me. Oh God, oh. you will spend, you will fast. Fast, 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 fast. And pray, 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 pray. For things that all you needed to do was to heap up the word in you. You know? So that it will build spiritual faith. God's kind of faith. So when the word is in you, you find that you can only talk the word. There will be a consistency in your life. A consistency in your communication. That you will know that you 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 know. All things are working together for your good. It's impossible for me to have a disadvantage in life. It's impossible. It's all for my good. Just one more scripture. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. You'll like this one. He says, for the word of God is quick and powerful. <laughs> I love Moffat's translation. He says, the logos of God is a living thing. The logos of God is a living thing. That's the word, the word of God. The logos of God is a living thing. The Amplified Translation says, it is living and active. In fact, let's, let's take from the Amplified. You'll like this. Amplified version. Now, Amplified doesn't mean it's saying something that's not there. My voice is being amplified to you right now. Are you hearing something I didn't say? If you're not sure, read my lips. He says, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Making it what? Active, operative, energizing, effective. Shout amen, somebody. <laughs> That's God's word. Keep it inside you. So that when the pressures of life come, when you are squeezed by the pressures of life, what will come out? The word. The word will come out. Every pressure on you will bring out the word. And God's word is creative. It will produce what it talks about. It will do what it says. Keep the word in you. Are you hearing me? Have no fear about anything. Don't think about, oh, is it, is it, I don't know whether it is my heart. Oh, is it my back? Is it my what? You know, you, you, you feel these things in your body and you're quickly watching and trying to do. Don't live your life like that. Don't live your life like that. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up high. Talk to the Lord. Say, I trust the integrity of the Word of God. Declare it with your faith. Say, I refuse to fear. <laughs>